Hello and welcome. It's the 22nd day of December 2023 and it's the weekend. To, to have fun with family and friends. Yes, it's the newspaper review here on TAP TV where we analyze and dissect trending and catchy headlines every day. I am Obek Jerry, your host for today. And with me here is a congrite of football AI, my regular suspect. <laughs> nice to meet you welcome. guys. Good, to, good to have you here on this show. Yeah, yeah definitely. Like you said, it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. It's the end of the week, um, work days, people go to their basic um, job and today they go back home and they relax and have exactly. fun throughout the weekend up until probably Monday when the weekday starts again for people to go back to their basic um, duties and make their earnings. But we still have people that work on Saturdays and Sundays so I don't know for them what we'd call it, <laughs> what it's going to be to them. But on the same page, um, it's, it's the weekend like we all said earlier, it's the weekend and um, uh, I still, I'll keep saying this. Merry Christmas to, exactly. to, to our viewers. And, and, and bless I forgot my usual question. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. Good. Definitely. I am all right. All right. All right, YouTube can also be a part of this show. Do well to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, drop your comments in the comment section, follow us across all our social media platforms. Without wasting much of our time, let's look into the first newspaper for the day. We'll be looking at the Nigerian Tribune. Today being the 22nd day of December 2023, the first headline here reads NAS plans to terminate certain case at lower court. Such story under that reads Senate confirms 11 justices for Supreme Court. It is of the stories found on page 5. Nigeria's unemployment rate increased to 4.2% in quarter 2. It's coming from the NBS. It is of the stories found on page 6. Web subsidy. NEC moves to design clear roadmap. It is found on page 2 of the Nigerian Tribune. We see here at the bottom story reads, Federal government announces mechanical completion of Portacot refinery. It is of the story found also on page 6 of the Nigerian Tribune. We see at the main story here reads, Tinubu reintroduces school feeding, education ministry to take charge. Sub story under that reads, Federal government vows to return 15 million out of school children to classroom by 2027. Another substory under that reads, says no to condition attachment to payments of four months withheld salary to ASU. It tells of the story found on page 12. Um, that's all we're taking on the Nigerian Tribune. Bright, I would like your thoughts on this headline. Um, yeah, the food scheme, the feeding scheme for um, the primary schools, that's the basic education students from class one to class three, was introduced during the last tenure of the ex-president uh, Bohamed Bari, and when it came into light, it was a good one. People saw it as uh, a good initiative, um, a good innovation coming from the president that he cares for children that are going to school because we all know that one of the things or one of the problems that are facing students going to school is the fact of not being able to feed properly. And once you don't eat, we as human, your brain exactly. would definitely not, not be able to function properly. And not even looking at it from the children's perspective, even while I was in tertiary institution, I find it very difficult to awesome. focus in class when I've not had something for, for breakfast or lunch and I'm sitting under a two-hour session of with a lecturer telling me about things that I'm supposed to know, but I'm not getting what he's saying. Yeah, follow through. And when that scheme came in, Nigerians in general, I would say, applauded it and people benefit, some students benefited, benefited from it rather because I don't think it was going to be, at, at the beginning stage of it, it was um, not the entire country in particular, but some section, but as time went on, it became um, something that went across um, all the states in Nigeria and maybe touched down few local governments in each state, but we, if I'm, we don't have the, the full statistics of how things work in Nigeria, because one thing that we lack in Nigeria is data and accurate data. yeah, accurate data of how these things are being carried out. And at the end of the day, towards the end of the led Mohamed um, Buhari tenor, we could see that there was like a stop to it and everything went back to normal. Um, there was this, um, would I say people coming out to say um, it was an avenue for the government to try to, um, I don't want to use the word still, but an avenue for them to 
move money for their own benefits. Yeah. So now you, we know that in Nigeria as a whole, there's a saying that education is free. Yeah, there's, there's this saying that education is free, but we know deep down it's not. It's, it, it's not because there's, always a, there's, a, there's, a, there's always a price to pay. So if you're saying education is free, <laughs> and these persons are getting these basic things free of charge, why not channel this money that you want to make to use for food for this said person and try to build the infrastructure of the school make sure they have basic lab equipment most of the things that you feel like students need to go by their daily activities why not challenge this money into that very art now you're saying okay you want to provide food for classes of one to three would it get to these persons would there be would, would there be continuity and how long and how long would this con would this well, last let's just, let's just saying from now to 2027 because we know that's a very long time yeah definitely let's not just look into that because that's how they said the former time and it didn't last long even when it was still ongoing there was still not direct um delivery of what was promised rather things were siphoned the resources and the finance in general yeah that's that's what we're, we're trying to look at because we find out that even at the local government level that these funds have been sent to we tend to find out that the children in most community secondary schools or primary schools rather that are supposed to be beneficiaries of this particular act or scheme they don't tend to get it they don't tend, they don't tend to enjoy the benefits that come we see local government chairman siphoning such money and we find out that due to the fact that there are a lot of things buzzing around the country in general people don't really tend to look into such cases there is no accountability, there's no transparency in the process of this coming into light. So I feel yeah. like they should they should look for a better initiative to carry out instead of this instead of these, the right. feeding scheme. And also in that particular news, we saw um, the um, paying of um, t um, university lecturers four months off um, of the said strike, eight month strike that they were not in school. So I'm trying to ask myself, why are you paying people for not working? But if if a proper um a proper um strategy or uh, structuring is being put out then we would not be having a situation like this and another thing that is being looked at is the fact that the um channel or avenue or committee that are in charge of paying lecturers their funds uh, is being looked into at the moment because they are not going to be under the normal government um federal government act or committee that is going to take charge of their own payment so we say coming into next year, there's going to be a body that is going to be inaugurated so they, they can be in charge of the payment of lecturer salary and all of that. This body also is going to be in charge of employment and getting all the things that lecturers need in, in terms of running their day-to-day -day activities in the tertiary institution. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Let's move away from the story and go into the next newspaper for the day. We're looking at the this day newspaper. We see at the top story here reads, NNPC completes PH refinery rehabilitation, resumes production after Christmas. Dangote gets second cargo. Substory under that reads Phase 2 of Potakot slated to come on stream by 2024. It is of the stories found on page 5 of the Disney newspaper. Supreme Court now has full bench as Senate confirms 11 new justices. Substory under that reads Adjourns plenary till next Friday through the lens of their judgment. It is of the stories found on page six of the this day newspaper we see at the bottom story here reads official mechanical completion of ph refinery you could see the photo of the engineers working in the refinery how they are addressing the the press well well that's a good one because for a start i feel like I the, like the, the, for a start. yeah for a start because that's what they said they've, they've completed the few the first phase of the refinery like for it kicking start and getting to work and they are saying that after the christmas season and celebration they're going to kick off with um getting the our crudes refined so that we can get our normal petroleum and, and all of that and according to the the reports from the news we are looking at having over 200 and if i'm not mistaken 210 if I'm not mistaken, over something barrels of thousand barrels of um, production coming in 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 a year, so it's a yeah two million two two hundred billion barrel coming in in a year. Yeah, that's that's what it says in, in the papers. And for me, I feel like that's a good one coming up. And 
if you have the Potakot refinery running by the early hours, by the early days of January, and the Dangote refinery running in Lagos, and we still have the Kaduna refinery. Even having only those two for a start set would be a good, a good one. Yeah, so we hope that with these refineries coming into action, taking out the normal role and things that you're supposed to do. Working okay, properly. Yeah, yeah, properly and giving us the basic production that we think we need as Nigerians, then definitely the prices of fuel and other crude um, commodity or products would reduce and would be stable. Not like what we are having now because we don't even know where we stand as as, as regards petrol. as of as of today. Do you know the price leaving Potakot to Lagos? It's over forty thousand naira. Exactly. What if if I could remember vividly, first time I travelled from Lagos to Akwaibom, I had to pay five thousand five hundred, five thousand five hundred, and that was like twenty. Was it even twenty? That was like yeah, twenty eighteen. 2017-2018, imagine in the space of five years. Not even up to five years. Not even up to five years. And you're multiplying you're, you're multiplying that and it's 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 way over. Now you can imagine. We are now paying the amount we normally pay for air is what we are now paying for now land. for land. So and, the, and and the local flight price is what we are paying for land and paying international flight fee for air. I mean, it's 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 crazy. I just feel like everything will just go back to normal with this P, um, Potakot refinery start running. When it start running, the Lagos refinery, which is the Dangote refinery, starts running, and they set up the Kaduna refinery. I feel like we will have a stable um, economy in in some certain ways. I feel like because once the price of petroleum, the price of petroleum tends to affect businesses Every all angle. all over Nigeria, yeah. and once especially it, as we don't most. Um, offices organizations do not have steady power supply mm -hmm. and we do not run electricity um, um electricity buses and cars yeah so i feel if, if that is being put on a minimal then every businesses will go back to a normal state and prices of commodities will go back and people would have the purchasing power if you check for every interview we make i'm always concerned about our purchasing power because that is the life of the ordinary man that is the value of an ordinary man what can you afford what can you afford that makes you um it gives you the opportunity to to stay alive now imagine when we started there was pure that was about five to ten era but now we are having one pure water for 20 naira, 25 naira, 30 even 13 naira yeah, yeah. at this point in time so if for me to get water to drink and i'm paying that much money how do i survive to get food how do i survive to pay my way to work how do i survive to get the basic enjoyment and the luxury lifestyle that i think i need as a human being so if that is not sorted out then what's the need of being on planet earth right. <laughs> two quick questions let me get your opinion do you think these all these the refinery thing the plans the structures made do you think do you see it coming to light come 24 one the second question is if eventually comes to light do you think you know how Nigerians, how Nigerians and Nigeria is in general. Do you think if, let's say, these plans come to light and, and the price of petroleum drops down, do you think the price of commodities will drop down? Knowing how Nigerians behave when price of things go up, it's hard for it to come down. Now, this is where we have bodies that, regulatory bodies, regulatory bodies that should be put in place. They're already in place, but now this is the time for them to act properly. Because I feel like if the price of crude um, products comes down, then imagine me, I'm getting petroleum for 700 and I'm using like 50 liters to run a day. Now imagine the price of oil comes down to 300 or 200 and I'm still getting 50 liters. Then definitely the price of all those commodities that I'm selling, because definitely for every price of commodities I sell, I, t I tend, add yeah, I tend, yeah, the petroleum value that is being added. So I tend to add, so definitely it has to drop. So this is supposed to affect every businesses in Nigeria in terms of the value of prices of products that is being sold. So there is a regulatory body that tends to look at the prices of things in Nigeria. And that is where that body comes in and feel like, okay, yes, this is what is going to happen. This is how the price of things is supposed to be. And if it doesn't come down to that particular yeah, age, then there, there is, no, there should be a penalty to that same to person. To, yeah, offenders that are, yeah, definitely. Do you see it coming tonight? It should, it should.
I, I am not the president of the country, neither am I in ev any public office or any regulatory body, or any regulatory body, but I feel like those that are in power, it's that's what they tell us. Yeah. They need to see, see the, the, the ordinary Nigerians are the ordinary citizens are the ones that fix them into that position. And if they don't have our plight at heart, then I don't see why they should be in that particular position at this point in time. Exactly. All right. Still on the newspapers here, we see at this, the main story here, it's Briggs. I witnessed week a Fubara peace meeting. Tinubu handed down presidential proclamation. Substory under that reads, insists states still PDPs. Four others assembly members in major eyes of law. Substory under that again reads, analysts claim governments may have grabbed victory from jaws of seeming defeats. What's your thoughts on that? Um, hearing from Briggs saying he witnessed the peace meeting. Okay, David Briggs. All this while he didn't act like he was in the meeting. Now, the truth, the truth of the matter is that as the days goes by, Every second, every minute, it's every hour, like you said it's new, new things keep unfolding. We keep hearing new stories about people coming out to say this, and there's been a, 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 point, a form of contradictory statement exactly. from different parties, people different that are involved countries. in what is happening in the state. And I feel like the people of River State are not being put into consideration, definitely, because I feel like these are people that, are, kind of yeah, that, are, that are in high powers, sitting in political offices that have once tested power, and whatever decision that is being made now would not definitely affect them, but That's the ordinary true. Nigerians are people of River State. Now, David Briggs is coming out to say that um, he was part of that meeting, and some or few other, state, other statesmen in River State were part of that meeting. And what the president and VK and other people that are coming out to say is that um, they reached an agreement with Fubara. Meanwhile, this was a proclamation pointing to the fact that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria came out and said in, in written form, this is what I want you to do. Now, you don't have a say. Exactly. Now, owing, owing to the fact that there has it's been... It's coming from a, a higher authority. Yeah, now it's, it's more like a dictator kind of um, this thing. I'm it's telling you, yeah, you have to do and this. Knowing, you, you don't have a choice. Where that governor was not appointed, he was doing it. Yeah! Now, now David, David Briggs is saying that all of this happening doesn't change the fact that um, Fubara is being covered in the sense that since this is um, um, the president coming out to say that wh whatever impeachment plans that is against Fubara should be scrapped out of the picture and other things, that would be beneficial only to the opposing party. Now, in these terms and conditions that is being put in place, I feel like Fubara has advantage just in one of those terms, which is the impeachment plans and procedures, yeah, being out, uh, yeah, for them saying they are withdrawing, their yeah, because for every other terms that is being put on that particular that, that document, was, that was what I was saying yesterday. Funny enough, the meeting was not even it, it, it's it, a one sided meeting, it, there was no room for negotiation. There was no room for negotiation, okay, according, so, so according to David Briggs. When the president came, to say what, um sources say that it's, it's more like the thing done under duress. Yeah, because according to David Briggs, he said when the president came in and presented the terms and condition for the priest um, procurement or whatever, that he said in his statement, it felt like a threat. Like if you don't do this, do there might be a repercussion coming in. And Fubara, knowing, yeah, knowing fully well that he's new in the system, that's what I should say. He has not, I don't think he has Yes. Being in a position where he has contested, like yeah, this. contested for any political position before. So this is like his first time, and, and you're coming into the office. Like an eye opener to yeah, me. and you're coming into the office, and the number one man in the country, President of the Republic of Nigeria, is telling you that you have to do this. And at the end of his speech, that looks like a threat, and he's asking you, what do you have to say? Are you expected him to, to, to come up and say, okay, um, as the governor, elected governor of, of, of River me. State, I am not going to accept these terms and conditions? Because you know that for a fact, there would be repercussions. It might be um, due to allocations or some other thing. I, I don't know, but we know how this pans out at the, at the long run because he might work first four years being in power. I might not be in office the next four years. And we know how Nigerians work. Once you're against higher power, they come at you with the EFCC and GSS and all of that. We can see what's happening currently to the former CBN governor and everything that is happening currently in his life, like right now. 
and I don't think Fubara is ready to toe that same line. So I feel like that is the main reason why he's like bowing his head and saying, okay, yes, I don't have an option. I just would sign this document so that peace is going to reign. But only fully aware that there are some other elder statesmen here in River State that are saying that this is a slap on the rule of law and this is a slap to the judicial system in Nigeria. And, it's a and this is a slap to River State in general. Ambition. Yeah, so I feel like in the next coming days, we would see more resolutions coming up. Maybe there will be like a shift. See, truth be told, I don't see these 25 persons or 27 persons going back to that house and not carrying out their same plan. Now, David Briggs is saying that if this person would go back to the house and say, okay, they want to impeach the sitting governor of River State, that this is going to be a slap to the president. But we in Nigeria have seen that there are times whereby the president is coming out to say one thing at the end of the day, they just leave you to, yeah, yeah. So we just hope that something better pans out in the next coming days. All right, let's go for a very quick break and come back and look at the last news we have for the day. So stay tuned. This is the children's studio. We certainly can deliver the best studio experience. Our carefully designed studio space can bring your diverse creative content ideas to life. We aim to consistently serve value to our customers far and wide. Come, let Tharv Media give life to your dreams. Tharv Media, a slice of infotainment. All right, welcome back from that very quick break. I must commend you for staying up for this time. Without wasting much of our time, let's look at the last newspaper for the day. We'll be looking at the Daily Sun and its leading. New minimum wage coming in 2024. Sub story on it that reads Government to launch $200 million National Philanthropy Office. Details of the story is found on page six of the Daily Sun newspaper. We see here at the bottom stories, it reads PDP attacks Lamido, cautions leaders against unguarded utterance. Details of the story is found on page 26 of the Daily Sun. We see here CBN to prosecute banks, POS agents, holding Naira. Do you think this is possible? Well, and what pattern of um, what pattern of prosecution would they embark, and what would they call holding of Naira? Uh, just to me, the other day you complained some banks paying a minimum of a maximum of five thousand Naira. Isn't that holding? No, I would say for them it's more like uh, an avenue. Where the ATMs do not pay at all and the POS um, having higher charges. Um, truth, truth, truth is, truth is, let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. Exactly. Because these banks, if if I were to be honest, they are trying to make it possible for this cash flow to get across to everybody. So, but they are giving more professional to treatment their to their customers for those banking with them. And other people that are coming to use their ATM, knowing fully well that there are some little charges that comes out from, okay, I'm the first bank user, I'm going to use Zenit Bank um, ATM machine. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being second charged, second I've been charged for using their ATM, and I feel that that charges goes to them, definitely. So if that is being done by these bank owners or these separate banks, I feel like it's a good one. But this can be managed where there is more money from the CBN pumped into these banks because now we exactly. people are saying that there's no money, there's no money, there's no money. But the court injunction has allowed for the old Nera notes to be yes, used. Exactly. Yeah, so are they saying that the money that they collected from Nigerians as at the early uh, month of the year during the election period, has all of those money been exactly. destroyed? Has been has it been destroyed? Or where are they basically? Because we know that after the election, there was a court injunction that said the money could still be in use. And even the new the new Naira notes that was in circulation during those times, we we barely see it at this time. We barely see them. And funny enough, it's 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 a joke that we spend a huge amount of money to get to print less amount of Naira notes. So what what is going on in the country? So what measures are they going to put in place to? Um, catch these perpetrators or people that they feel like are hoarding money. Exactly. What do they call hoarding of money of the Naira notes? And what are the punishments for these people? Because from the beginning of this week, you find out that POS agents are continuing in their increase of charges that they charge people that come to like, use. Like I read somewhere, POS agents are one of the problems that we are facing in this country. Nin every Nigerian is one of the problems that Nigeria is facing. Now, we are just looking at it from different sector owing to the fact that POS agents are part of, like, under the banking sector. And even if we want to complain, ah, banks are giving us issues, then POS 
um, like owners are also giving us issues. If you want to go to markets where we say oh, people are increasing the price of their goods and commodities, we could also say that it's also an act of production companies going to the high price of how they sell wholesale down to people that are retailers, giving to us the actual consumers. So it's, it costs across every sphere of the Nigerian hemisphere. Even we, when we go to um, the import and export, whatever, where we find out that the tax rates for people that are importing or people that are exporting is on a massive, um, on, on, a high, on a high scale. If you want to look at the Nigerian government in totality, it's a mess because we find out that the money that is intended to be used to give us the basic amenities that we need is meant to foster their own selfish interest and for them to spend lavishly on their own lavish lifestyle or luxurious lifestyle that they tend to live so every nigerian is involved in this one when it comes to how we operate how we tend to deal with ourselves personally and hiking of prices yeah definitely nigerians will find every opportunity it's business no doubt but at least let's put personal interest at a minimal and emotional interest in terms of this person coming to buy from me, like how much do you think I could sell? If I was to be the one to go get from this person, would I want to be the one? Only fully aware that I know the price of this commodity, how, how much I'm getting it from for wholesale, and I'm adding way more beyond that I'm what I'm supposed to add in terms of my profit, then it's for me I feel like it's wickedness and not just profit and business. Agreed. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. All right, still on the newspapers, we see here. Federal government admits adverse effects of brain drain in the education sector. It is of the stories found on page 26 of the Daily Sun newspaper. Senate passes bill extending implementation of 2023 budgets to March. You see the story on page 27 of the Daily Sun newspaper. With the main story here reads, same-sex marriage, Nigerian Catholic bishops, Taku Pope. Sub story under that reads, say blessing man man, woman woman marriage against God's law cultural sensibility of nation. I have been waiting patiently to get to this story, so I will hear what you have to say about this. Now, this um, same-sex marriage, um, we know at the, I think, was, was it on Tuesday or Wednesday when the Pope in the Vatican City made that declaration that um, all Catholic churches around the world yes. should bless same-sex marriage. Now, what is same-sex marriage? Which is a man getting married to a man and a right. woman getting married to a woman. But before, we delve deep into that. I I wanted to put it to viewers out there. Um, there is a documentary that I came across um, months back. I was opportune to to watch. It's um, a documentary from Matt Walsh, and he has had um, interviews with prominent um, presenters in Europe. And one of them is um, Morgan Pierce. And I would want our viewers to go and watch that particular documentary. Um, what is a woman? And there's another documentary that states what is a man. Now, this documentary is trying to analyze the state of being of what exactly is a woman and why do people like feel like, oh, I'm, they have the physical attributes of a man, but internally they feel like, okay, I am a woman. And so what is the basis for saying this person is a man and this what person, qualifies. yeah, what qualifies this person to be a woman and what qualifies this person to be a man? Because currently in our world today, we find people tend to change their gender in terms of transgender moving from one state of being to another and we also found what that same thing happening here in nigeria when we have one of our own did i say one of our own but one of our citizens rather in nigeria many of them celebrities trending all over social media so now this gives the basis of the same sex marriage because at the same time we find that that they are man yeah, you're a man. You have the physique of a man. You have the genitals, or what would I call um, the, the, the gender characteristics that, that of physique, that what is being placed to a man and what is characterized as a woman. So there's this differential um, state of being. So I don't understand. Now, biblically, in, in, in biblical context, there is nowhere in the Bible where they say it's lawful. Would I say lawful? The religion itself doesn't allow for a man and a man to get married. Our cultural integrity and our cultural values, our norms, does not allow it, yeah, for a man sense. and a man to get married or a woman and a woman, same sex, to get married. Now, this same-sex marriage came like way back, like years ago in America and 
we found out that other right, yeah. yeah other countries are beginning to adopt the same sex marriage but it tends to be difficult to dominate yeah yeah in africa because we find out that other african countries yeah we believe that this is our culture and we stand by it and before you can you can't come to tell us that this is how things are supposed to be and because you colonized us we are supposed to embrace it and they have found out that it is very difficult for this ideology of same sex same sex marriage to penetrate into the nigerian or african hemisphere and so they felt like and they know one of the key factors yeah is religion, religion religion this and forgive me for saying this but i feel like apart from ethnicity religion is one key factor that has that would unite or divide us. They divide a country because once we have a divided ideological view or perspective that about what religion is to a different certain persons, then definitely we won't decide to work together. Now they are coming to say that okay, I wouldn't know if they are using the Pope, but I feel like it's there's there, right. there, there, yeah, there's yeah, there's I feel like there's an under on un, undercover motive or underneath motive for why the Pope will come out to say they should be a blessing for same sex marriage. Now, the bishop here in Nigeria, the, the president of the Catholic um, NBCN. NBCN here in Nigeria, is coming out to say that the same sex blessing, as stated by the Pope, he is trying to give a more of like, how would I put it? He's trying to differentiate it from Break what, down. yeah, what people think it actually is. Now, but he's saying so biblically. Let's say, let's say it's he's trying to make a justification out of it. More like a justification, but trying to clarify what what, exactly what the Pope is trying to meant. say or what he thinks the Pope is trying to say. Because now we know for Although a fact. I, I, I saw that comment. I knew, I knew many persons, especially as related to the deep um, powers and the Catholic um, Christendom, they would come out to try and explain that. But why, in quotes, would the Pope? make reference to same sex without blessing we know we know to us nigerians and to us as christians seems anything that has to do with same sex having anything um sexualized or sexualized activity is a sin yeah right? apart from apart from it being a sin <clears throat> under uh religious value or cultural right. values cultural even values. in the law of the land exactly in all it's punishable it's punishable by law our country yeah it's punishable. it's punishable so if you know okay they are trying to justify that the pope is saying we should bless sinners we should draw sinners from close definitely right? now that's why that... didn't he make it in general make it and say okay bless anybody make bless the thieves bless the the rapists now and why making reference to now now the truth is the truth is we as christians if, if we want to look at it just as the bishop here in nigeria explains we found out that christianity or Christ came for sinners. Exactly. Definitely. So, whatever this blessing is talking about is mainly based on the fact that for sinners, they need the grace of God. Okay, so you're trying to say why it's, it, while it's meant it, it, for sinners, it's meant for basically to, to, draw them, to, to draw them closer to God. Now, the now, and the lesbians. now the bishop is saying, the bishop is saying that the same-sex blessing in marriages is not an official now he gave a breakdown about the normal ritual in catholic church That's in terms of blessing in, in terms of blessing there's what he called the ritual the legal something the, the tigoti or something like the that tigoti. yeah on, on it and the unofficial or is it on normal or something something that is not, not uh, in, their doctrine, in their doctrine but but the they but they, but they practice it it's more like okay we come into church for a marital blessing you come to church you dress in your and um, marital marita regalia your gown your suit and the pope or the bishop in church blesses you that is the normal one that comes with it and other based on on, on that but now the same sex blessing comes with the fact that there is no ceremonial activity in church blessings. no it's more like saying oh as 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 a sinner oh, we, we pray for yeah us. pray for me we are not praying for us to change our ways we are praying for us to try now, the bishop, to be no the bishop is saying there is there is this hope that these persons believe that god exists and they are coming to god for blessings so there is hope for change so it's more like there's hope for change not um in terms of supporting the practice of sex, same sex marriage even even in our churches today we find that we don't know them maybe we don't know them as thieves but they, they come they, yeah, they come they and they give tithes to church so why don't we refuse their money 
but you know they hardly come out openly to admit that they are this and that. Now this is this is for that people. Is, that is where my emphasis is. Th these are for people that feel like oh they have what it takes. They have the ma they want to be accepted by the community. But and you know and you know and you know that you know the LGBTQ is trying everything possible to be accepted in our community. And it's not going to be. It's, it's not going to be accepted. I don't think that there's but, any but country in Nigeria. Mind you, the Pope has a huge influence, especially as regards to religion. Especially in Nigeria, so I don't, I don't, so there I is don't, a higher chance that this gay to gay thing would increase. No, I don't think it's going to increase because the head of the Catholic yeah. bishop here in Nigeria are coming out to say they are not accepting the same to same marriage practices in church, which means there will be no official blessing. Like, okay, there is a wedding and it's a man, man with a man, and the Pope will be in church and people will sit in church. And he will be the one to oversee the marriage uh, marriage ceremony. No, it's not going to happen. The Pope is saying that the the Bishop is saying that is not going to happen. But on the other hand, they would be praying for people that are practicing it that they should be closer to God so they can get the message that yes, this same sex marriage is not something that should that, happen. That is that is to say, if a gay person comes to the Pope to the to the Bishop with his gay partner. It's depending, the prayers they will get is depending on what they come for. If they come and say, bless our union, they, they wouldn't. The bishop would not bless them. If they come and say, okay, just pray for us to live long and pray for us to be wealthy, the bishop would. I, I don't know. I don't know if that, will go, if that is what the bishop is saying. But from what the newspaper is saying, according to the report that was being given, he is saying that whatever the Pope is saying about same-sex marriages and what the social media is carrying because there has been a whole lot of buzz going on in social media immediately that statement came out and the Bishop is saying the same-sex marriage according to the Catholic doctrine is not acceptable but they can bless people that are into same-sex marriage just as Christ prayed for thieves just so they could change bring them closer it's more like a saying bring your enemies your friends close and your enemies closer it's more like getting to know these people and maybe you want know why they, did that why they know yeah they are under and there is a and there's a possibility for them to change definitely but what's ever been said we say no to same sex yeah we say no to exactly same sex because we are culturally inclined in our country and in our region as yeah well. definitely not just in nigeria but also outside in yeah in, in africa as a whole and for me i feel like this is the best moment for me to tell viewers out there what is a woman documentary i feel like you guys should go ahead and see what that documentary is talking about right thank you very much this is where we draw our curtains for today thank you very much mr bright you've done yeah. so well it's good to like, be here like i said earlier you too can also be a part of this show subscribe to our channel follow us across all our social media like Drop your comments in the comment section. I am Obed Jerry, your host for today, and this has been the newspaper review. Talk to me. Thank you.